Okay, Le Chatelier's principle is covered in section 7.4 of your textbook. This is a re very important concept um, and a challenging one, so try your best with it and we'll speak more in class about it. So a system at equilibrium, when stressed, will respond to try to counter or offset that stress and achieve or reach a new equilibrium. So that is Le Chatelier's principle, and we're going to consider that in the context of um, different stresses, concentration, temperature, and pressure. You'll notice I use the word offset or counter, essentially do the opposite of the stress. That's how the system responds. So we'll consider this reaction, A plus 2B in equilibrium with C. You'll notice I've included an energy term, and we would say that, seeing as the energy term is on the right side of the arrow, that this is exothermic reaction in the forward direction, endothermic in the reverse direction. We'll consider that when temperature is the stress. To begin with, we'll consider concentration stresses. So, I'm showing here that the stress is to increase the concentration of A. So here's the stress. How does the system respond? Well, keep in mind it's responding to offset or counter the stress. So if the stress is to increase the concentration of A, then the system will respond to try to decrease or consume A. So we can fill that in to consume A or decrease. So which way does the equilibrium position shift. That's what our next blank is. So when the system responds to consume A, does that speed up the forward reaction or the reverse reaction? So you have to ask yourself, which direction consumes A, decreases A, uses up A? Hopefully you're thinking the forward direction. So that means that the forward reaction will speed up and and eventually the reverse reaction will increase and will reach a new equilibrium position. Because the forward rate initially sped up, we say that the equilibrium position will have shifted right, because initially more C will be produced, and so at the new equilibrium we'll have more C than we did um, before. And so the equilibrium shifts right. So what's going to happen to the mixture in terms of color if the equilibrium position has shifted right? So we have an original equilibrium with a certain amount of yellow A, colorless B, and blue C. And if the equilibrium position shifts right, then we're going to have more of C than we used to. And so the mixture will turn blue. or we'll certainly have an increase in blue. Will it be enough to turn it completely blue? Depends how much we increase the concentration of A. Okay, so what does that look like in a graph? Well, I've tried to color code them, so yellow, black, and blue for A, B, and C. Let's first indicate the stress. The, the stress is to increase A. A is the yellow curve here. So I'm going to show a sharp spike a sudden increase in the concentration of A. Now, the system responds to offset A, so A is going to start to decrease until it reaches the new equilibrium. B, which I'm showing in black, will also decrease until it reaches its new equilibrium position. And C will increase, which I'm showing in blue. Don't worry about whether or not yours cross. The key is that you show the key is that you show the stress as a spike, an instantaneous increase in the change uh, in the concentration of A. Remember A was yellow, B was black, and C was blue. Okay, and that you show a new equilibrium being established. So the fact that you have the new plateau in the graph shows that a new equilibrium has been established. Let's try a different concentration stress. So we'll decrease the concentration of B. So we're going to decrease B. So the system is going to respond, according to Le Chatelier's principle, the system will respond to offset or counter the stress. Do the opposite. 
So if the stress is decreasing B, then the system will respond to produce B. Now, which direction, forward or reverse, will produce more B, will increase B? And if you thought the reverse direction, that would be correct. So the equilibrium shifts left <clears throat> because the reverse direction is going to cause more of A and B to form. So A was yellow, right? And B was colorless and C was blue. So we're having the mixture become more yellow. So what does that look like in our CT graph? Well, first illustrate the stress. The stress is B. B was colorless and the stress was to decrease B. So I'm going to drop B down instantaneously here. Okay, now the stress is now, the response is to produce more B. So we're about to see A and B increase. So I need to show A increasing over time to a new plateau and B increasing over time to a new plateau and C decreasing over time to a new plateau. So again, we'll notice the stress here is a decrease in the concentration of B instantaneously, and then we see the response and the new equilibrium established. Okay, a third concentration stress. How about we decrease C? So there's the stress. How does the system respond? By the Le Chatelier's principle, the system responds to offset the stress, counter the stress, do the opposite. What's the opposite of decreasing C? Increasing C. So the system responds to produce C. The idea is to increase C. So which direction increases C? Forward or reverse? Forward, yes. And so if the forward reaction is speeding up, that's going to end up shifting the equilibrium right, which means our mixture will turn more blue because C was blue in color. Okay, so to illustrate that, we need to show on the graph, we need to show C is being decreased. So that was the blue curve here. And now as a result, C is going to increase and A and B are going to decrease. Okay. Next stress is temperature. Here it's important to see the energy term. So in order to answer a question about a stress of temperature, you need to know where the energy term is. It may be here, which I did for this example, or it could be positioned on the left side. If it's positioned on the right, the forward direction is exothermic, the reverse direction is endothermic, consuming energy. And if the energy term were on the left, it would be opposite to that. So, you, so that really matters. You'll need to take note, where is the energy term? So let's say the stress then is to increase temperature. So here's the stress. How does the system respond? Well, think of increased temperature as like a transfer of thermal energy into the system. The system is going to respond, right, to try to decrease that thermal energy or consume the energy. So consume, another word for that might be absorb. Hopefully that makes you think of the endothermic reaction. Now you have to look at the specific example to see whether endothermic is uh, your forward or reverse reaction. In this particular example, the endothermic direction is the reverse reaction. And so that will shift the equilibrium position left, which means the mixture will turn yellow. <clears throat> so as with the concentration stress, we had an instantaneous spike in the, in the concentration of one of the substances. A temperature stress will have no spike. So we'll just start to show the change as the equilibrium shifts left. So as it shifts left, A and B both increase until they reach a new plateau. So there's A increasing and B gradually increasing. And then C will decrease until it reaches a new plateau. So I'll just point out here that there is no spike 
for a temperature stress. Okay, so we've learned here that an increase in temperature always stimulates that endothermic reaction. The system will respond to absorb energy. Okay, now what about if we decrease the temperature? So we've removed thermal energy from the system. Now the system needs to produce energy. So which direction is going to produce? Produce or release? Again, hopefully you're thinking now exothermic. So in this particular example, with energy appearing on the right side of the arrow, the exothermic direction is the forward direction, which means that the equilibrium is going to shift right, which will have our mixture turning blue. And so that means that C will be increasing to a new equilibrium position, and A and B will be decreasing. So again with before, you'll notice that there is no spike for the temperature stress. All right, and a new equilibrium. We have a new plateau again for a new equilibrium position. Okay, the last stress that we look at is pressure. So here's where the system would be gases. Gases are sensitive to changes in pressure. So when you are dealing with a pressure stress, the number of particles involved becomes important. So notice we have one particle of A and two particles of B that combine to form one particle of C. So we'll consider that as we answer this question. So the first stress I've shown, and again this is the stress here, is an increase in pressure. And let's realize for gases, a way to increase the pressure is to decrease the volume. When you decrease the volume, the same particles are moving and colliding in a smaller space that will increase the number of collisions. So decreased volume corresponds to an increase in pressure. So the system's going to respond to try to decrease the pressure. That's the goal. So do more particles collide less often or less particles? We want less collisions, less collisions. So are we going to have three particles here become one particle or are we going to have one particle become three? Which one would provide fewer particles that would then collide less often and have the effect of decreasing pressure? Hopefully you're thinking the forward direction. Three particles become one, and so in response to an increase in pressure, the system will look to produce fewer particles, which means in this case that the equilibrium will shift right, which means the mixture will turn blue. Now, the stress for a pressure change in the graph actually shows as a spike for all three substances. So we're decreasing the volume, right? So imagine that you have a flask I've got five particles in there, right? And if we decrease that volume, now those same five particles are in a smaller volume. What happened to the concentration? When we decrease the volume, a decrease in volume led to an increase in concentration. And so all three of these substances are going to show an increase in their concentration. And then we show the response. So the key here is that all will spike for a pressure stress. Now, how does the system respond? The equilibrium shifting right, so A and B are decreasing. So I'll show the yellow and black decreasing to level off and C increasing. Okay. Moving on, the last one here, a decrease in pressure. Well, the decrease in pressure came from an increase in volume. So we've got a sudden drop in the number of collisions. The system is going to respond to try to produce more particles to collide more often. Remember, we had one particle on the left and three on the right. And so it's actually going to favor the reverse reaction to produce more particles that will collide more often, therefore raising the pressure, which is the opposite to the decrease in pressure stress. 
So the equilibrium will shift left, which means the mixture will become more yellow. And we can show that on the graph by first determining the, the stress, how we illustrate the stress. So we're looking again at a, a change or a spike in the concentration instantaneously of all three substances. So if we go from a flask of that size and we increase the volume, we can see that these particles in the larger volume now have a lower concentration. So as you increase volume, it decreases concentration. And so we need to suddenly decrease or instantaneously decrease the concentration of each of the substances. So they all spike for a pressure stress. Okay, now what happens when the equilibrium shifts left? Well, A and C, A and B start to increase and then level off at the new equilibrium and C will decrease. Oops, and I realized I am right out of area here to show this plateauing. So what I'm trying to do here is, is show this, but I was running a little bit out. That should plateau. A little bit out of space there. Okay, so it's true this is challenging. Um, the steps very much are identifying the stress. We definitely ID the stress, right? And then how does the system respond? It will always respond to offset the stress. Whichever reaction speeds up first, that's the way the equilibrium will shift. So you figure out which way it's going to shift, right? If the forward reaction speeds up first in response, then the equilibrium position is shifting right. If it's the reverse reaction that speeds speeds up first, then it's going to be shifting left. Okay, and let's recognize that when you have reactants, well, maybe I'll just say in general, when you have reactants here, the forward direction, the forward direction causes a decrease in reactants and an increase in products. If you have the reverse reaction speeding up, that's going to cause a decrease in the products and an increase in the reactants. And so those are basic concepts that I'm applying every time I um, answer these questions or sketch on the graph. Keep in mind that for concentration, right, there's going to be one spike on the CT graph. For temperature, there's going to be no spike. You just show the response. And for pressure stress, they all spike everything spikes and you have to figure out which way. Okay, so we'll, I'll take your questions in class.